Hey, Business Building Warrior, this is Jim with Silent Sales Machine Radio. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to have an episode with a guest for you today. This guest happens to be a director on our coaching team. If you give us a phone call, if you go to silentgym.com and click on the coaching link, you're going to see a phone number. You can text us or call us or contact us in some way. You're going to be chatting with one of the consultants on our team. And the guy that directs that team is Matt Thompson. He's been with us for a couple, two and a half years or so now. He has extensive experience in business coaching. That's his background. And one of the things that we dive in today is he kind of contrasts the way we do things here with the rest of the industry. There's some secret sauce in the way that we do things around here that really sets us apart in a significant way. And I think you're going to enjoy some of those lessons. So this isn't just an episode for those who are considering coaching. But it's, a, I think, an episode where you begin to see the background ethics and the background foundational principles that are the pillars of what we've built here. And the fact that it's lasted for 18 or 19 years should be significant enough to encourage you to pay a little bit of attention to some of the lessons behind the lessons, even if you're not interested in becoming a coaching student on our team. One of the most significant differences, for example, of our coaching program that you won't see in any other coaching program that I'm aware of is all of our coaches are successful students that we've recruited to become coaches. No one else does it that way, but why not? Matt and I talk a little bit about that today, about some of the interesting phone calls we've received over the years, some of the people that we've helped out with thousands of students and thousands of success stories over almost two decades now. It's pretty incredible to say. There's something pretty special going on around here. And I think you're going to learn a lot about business, doing it the right way, in our opinion. We'd love to hear your feedback if you think there's something we could improve. But we've certainly built a system that's serving a lot of people really, really well. And we're quite proud of it. I think that'll show through today. So I'd love to introduce to you my good friend, our coaching consultant director, Mr. Matt Thompson. So Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jim. Happy to be here. Good to see you. We work together all the time, but you've never been a guest on the podcast. So first <laughs> this time. is a first for both of yeah, us. I'm excited. Well, we did an episode not too long ago with, with Deborah, who works every day side by side with you. Uh-huh. And people loved it. Listeners loved it. So here's another chance to get to know someone who's on the other side of the phone. If you give us a call or shoot us a text, these are the people you're talking to. And Matt runs the coaching office over there, like I mentioned in the intro. But let, let's get into it. Like, what do you do? What's your role? Fill us in. <laughs> So my role, I more or less, you know, I oversee all of the the sales and the coaching and operations for the whole organization. I'm kind of the link between the sales and the coaches and the fulfillment. So it's a great spot to be in because I get to see the students when they start out in the beginning point, when we're just planting those seeds and then watch them and groom them all the way through the process until we have a beautiful crop to harvest and a great success story that we can share with the community and continue to motivate and inspire others. And I know you've been in the industry a while now. Uh, We prepared a couple of questions, but this is one I didn't even talk to you about. But just hearing you talk about it for a moment, I know you've been in the industry of business coaching for some time. You've, You've been in other organizations. Contrast what we do here with what else you've seen in the past or even currently in the industry. What is it you think... That, that what is it that makes it different here? Well, I think what makes us different is just the fact that we have a community of entrepreneurs who truly care about one another and are pulling for each other to become successful. It's hard to find that anywhere in business and in life. It's always a competition and someone's always willing to step on someone else to get another leg up. It's just not that way around here. We all have that abundant mindset. We recognize that if we're all in the same harbor, all of our ships are going to rise with the tide. And I think That's it's right. and good ideas would kind of be that tide. We can right. all contribute to the good idea or the encouragement or the optimism pool anytime we want. <laughs> and yeah, it, I exactly. love that analogy. Well, there's no ego in this community either, right? We're really willing to learn from the newest of the new. And I think that's one thing that you've really done a good job of staying laser focused on is that everybody knows something that you don't. This game's changing so fast that it's the new people that are usually figuring out new angles and new strategies and and new ways to creatively make money on the internet. 
So it's exciting to be part of it, even if I'm just the guy holding up the sign and making sure that people stay out of the weeds most of the time. <laughs> That's a lot of what we do is like, well, let me ask you a couple of questions before you make that really stupid mistake that we've seen other people make so many times. Let's do it gently and in love, but you're crazy, right? right? That's a lot <laughs> of the job around here, it seems. I, I love I love that you, you mentioned the, the ego thing. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of like Jordan Peterson type podcasts and that sort of thing, you know, and leadership podcasts and just, you know, leadership. uh, Andy Stanley has one that um, one of our coaches turned, turned me on to. Um, But the ego is such, can be such an organization killer at any level, not just at the top, the guys making the decision, but at any level, when people start saying, I need more of the spotlight, I need a little more, I need a little more credit for the good ideas that flow. But what we've built here is a true, um, what's the word? Meritocracy. Right. Yeah. If you're achieving something of significance, we're all going to take a step back and look in your direction and go teach us. Exactly. Without any ego allowed. Like, hey, right. you may have only been here a month, but you're doing something cool. Tell us about it. Right. And no one has to battle for the, the credit of the idea. It's just we're all kind of learning and throwing into this pool of knowledge and, and all ships rising with the tide. I think if, if our leadership team has done something right, it's, I think it's that of, you know, good ideas float to the top and we don't care who gets the credit for them. So yeah, yeah well said, man. Yeah, you know, anything else stand out as different around here uh, from, from your experience? And I, you know, we've talked about these kind of things yeah. before, but I wouldn't mind digging into it a little bit more. Well, here's, here's what's really cool to be a part of. In all the other organizations I've been in in the past, it's like somebody's successful in the business. They may or may not have done coaching. That's who the coaches are. They teach and train and, and go forward from there. The agenda isn't always in the best interest of the student. It's uh, in the best interest of the company or the organization, right? And we're very forward thinking with it. It's always got to be better for the student. We're thinking about the student and the community. That's the number one priority of our agenda in this community. So, you know, one of the awesome things that we do is we take our students, they come through the program successfully, they become our friends, they become our family, they become our coaches. And so our product create more product for us, right? It's a beautiful ecosystem that we've created where the coaches come through or the students come through, they become successful, then they become coaches and leaders within the community. And that's Mm -hmm. what continues to drive this thing forward, which is why I don't ever see it slowing down or stopping because it's a snowball affected yeah. it continues to compound i mean just since you know over the last two and a half years or so that i've been a part of it we brought over 25 students through that more than that probably 40 students through the process of coaching and now they're coaches yeah and when we do and not that, everyone becomes a coach no not but not, a lot of them do right those that the process that works part of a teacher and those that want to give back and want to be able to pay it forward that's how they were able to get to where they are. And so I think a lot of them have that desire to be able to give back and help others. You've just given me a book idea, man. Last thing I needed, because I got about nine of them crammed in my head right now, but the the concept of a leadership flywheel, right? Where right. It's, just, it's just this spinning machine that produces leaders who produce leaders. And it's not dependent on one core leader or even leader team, leadership team. It's dependent on a set of principles that we all agree to abide by. In the X, it's always open for those who don't like those set of principles. But if you stay and abide by those principles, the leadership path is kind of there in front of you to step onto if you'd like. Uh, and that, that's that been our formula for so long around here. And hopefully that resonates with some people. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, well, I, I could say a lot more on that, but I think I've got the first four chapters in my head just sitting here brainstorming with you on it because yeah. you're right. I, you just don't see that kind of thing very many places in the no. world. And, and we've got the evidence that it works. Well, so. that's the nice thing about the internet is you can't really hide a bad reputation. It's all out there. If, anytime I'm talking to a, a potential student that wants success stories or testimonials, I say, well, I mean, I could send you some directly, but of course, I'm going to send you the best success stories, right? Don't take my word for it. Just go do some investigation, poke around, send some messages on Facebook, see what people have to say about their experience and their process. And I guarantee the only people, if there are any people that haven't had a great experience, there was a breakdown in communication. 
And if we can just get that synced back up, then we're able to get them back on track. And it happens all the time. Sometimes people need to take a break. And we're here with open arms when they're ready to come back to us to get them back on track and, and ultimately where they were trying to go. Man, you just hit the nail on the head on something. Brilliant observation. The breakdown in communication is literally the only flaw of this model because we're not all in the same building in the same room and we can't just, you know, we assume when we send an email, for example, that the other person received it. And if they don't reply within a week, we assume that it's because they don't like us or they're ignoring us or we're not important. Right. But a lot of times it's because it ended up in the spam folder. Yeah. And the number of times where things have just gotten wonky and we're all like, what happened? That person is, is upset. It was an email failure. Right. <laughs> That's yeah. it. A communication failure. Not even so much that we didn't understand each other. It's like the email literally went to the spam folder. So on a yeah. on more than one occasion, we've had to like, okay, explain, like, just get on the phone. Like, oh, we've been trying to email you for three weeks. Could you check your spam folder? Oh, there's all the communication I was trying to get from you guys. Right. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the disadvantages of the era we're in. But uh, yeah, that's funny um, because we literally, we, having coached, I was just talking to Nathan yesterday, 10,000 people is our estimate, you know, that, that well, since yeah. the time he and I started working together, about 7,000 of those are coming through our program and we've helped other programs along the way. Um, mm-hmm. But the, the vast majority of them here and you just can't find those people who say, yeah, I went through the coaching program. It was terrible. With, with thousands of people, you'd think there'd be at least several hundred out there somewhere. They just aren't. They just yeah. aren't. So we're very proud of the track record and the success and uh, you know, a few people we couldn't communicate with and things fell through the cracks possibly, but hundreds and hundreds of recent success stories is hard to argue with. And you're a big part of that, Matt. So, so thank you for that. So what, what exactly is your role? Like you come into work and do what? So I come into work and it's you know, my role to, to get the team going, keep them motivated, keep them a- eager to serve and work with others. It's ongoing training. It's keeping everybody in the loop on what's new, what's coming next. It's working with coaches and working through problems. That's really what it is. My job is to find solutions, find solutions for my consultants to communicate better and work with people and serve better, finding solutions for coaches and for our students to improve their businesses. And 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 when you say consultant, that's always my goal. And everything that I try to do is just make it better. I'm not trying to change it or transform it or do anything other than just add a little more to it and just make it 1% better every day. That's been my goal from the very start. Yeah. I I love that. Those little 1% improvements, Mm -hmm. the multiplication effect, the compounding effect of that. I love that, that mentality, those slow and steady improvements, just tweaking systems in the right direction. Because there's always 150 good ideas that we could do, but we tackle the ones that we seem are the most viable. They're going to serve the most people with the most impact. And we we tweak our systems. Here we are uh, on the other side of doing that for 18, 19 years. Right. With your help. You mentioned the word consultant though. I want to hear, you know, what, when you say that, I know what it is, of course, but explain to, to the listener today, what do you mean when they call us, they're going to talk to a consultant? Who are these folks? So these are the folks like Deborah that you saw on the podcast or John or Eric or Jonah, any one of these consultants that we have in the office. And their job is to find people who are sincere and serious about creating something significant on the internet. We want to focus on those who want to treat this like a real business and be professional. And there's nothing wrong with taking a hobby approach and just seeing how it goes. And if it does great, if not, oh, well, you're going to move on to something else that that's not the kind of person that we want to bring into the fold for coaching. You know, we want those if they've kind of adopted that mindset that failure is not an option. They're going to make it work with or without us, but with us, they can see it happening a lot faster with a lot less roadblocks. You make it sound like we turn some people down. <laughs> we do. We do have to turn people away. It's, you know, it's, we get a lot of people. We've got a great podcast and so many awesome stories in the Facebook group. We get tons of people that come to us thinking coaching is a silver bullet. And if mm-hmm. I've got a coach, I'm going to be successful by default. And I have to be the bearer of bad news when that's not the case. That's not the reality. Sure, there's a lot these mentors can do but they're not going to roll anybody out of bed in the morning and force them to do the work. And there's just no way that our coaches can want it for our students more than our students want it for themselves. Well said. I do have some coaches that would probably argue differently. I I know who you're talking about. I was like, no, I will make you want to want this. (laughs) 
Yeah, we've, we've got a great group. I mean, we're so we blessed. Sure do. So much gratitude for the team that we've built, and they're constantly progressing and pushing it and getting better and going further. And it just drives the whole community. Yeah, it's awesome. yeah. It it it's pretty amazing the level of of commitment. And and a lot of our coaches, they're doing very well financially. They don't need none of them need by design the coaching income. Right. We pay well, as far as I know, better than anyone in the industry. But we're only paying people that we kind of have to beg to come do this because they've got successful businesses. Those are our best coaches. They're just too busy to take any more students. Those are all our best coaches, right? So we got to pay them to make it worth their time to do this because if they just said, hey, I'm available for free, get on my calendar, they'd fill up eight years worth of slots, right? Like, yeah. We have to pick and choose who's really serious about this, but then they put their heart into it. And our, our whole business is built Matt, I don't say this very often, and you've probably heard me say it before, but I've had some people ask me over the years, you've got this team of, you know, it used to be five coaches and then 20 and then 40 and then well over 60. And, like, and what's your interview process? How do you find these people? And we've revealed some of that today. But part of the secret sauce too is the fact that, and this is a, one of those Hebrew principles I love to pull from. If the only thing that I know about someone is the fact that they've run a successful, profitable business over an extended period of time with happy customers. Mm -hmm. That's all I know about that person. Their economic background, their race, their gender, their worldview, you know, whether they got a cat or not, you know, that stuff doesn't matter. If they've run a successful, profitable business over an extended period of time with happy customers, that person is a very safe bet to add to just about any team. You could be a team Absolutely. of people that are volunteering at a church, at a food pantry, or a team of people that are trying to make a decision about something big and important. They just the skill set that goes into achieving that makes you different than ninety nine point nine percent of the rest of the population. So when we build a team consisting of those people as our leaders and our coaches and our, you know the people that rely on to create content, suddenly you've got a really incredible group of people without having to have a robust interview process to filter them through, right? So that, uh, that has really been part of our secret sauce is, you know, tell me what you're doing that works. Yeah. You know, prove it. Well, that's, that is the secret sauce, right? You'll get a lot of these other coaching companies that that's exactly what they are. There's coaches that haven't necessarily done the business. They've been trained on how to teach the business. Mm -hmm. All of our coaches are true mentors in the sense that they're transferring the knowledge to you through the experience that they've had as entrepreneurs themselves. And the experiences they're having currently. Right. And the, so the power of our, we've got a group of about a hundred of us. Most people don't realize this. We've got a private Facebook group. This is all our coaches, content creators, moderators, administrators on the team, people pretty much in any role. And there's a lot of people who probably should be in that group that aren't just because they're not really shaping the direction of the content creation efforts, I guess. Right. Uh, but the combined power of that group to tackle literally any e-commerce challenge that anyone would ever run into, not just with Amazon, but anywhere. That is a powerful core group that we have that is way smarter than any one of us. Uh, the connections and the combined achievements. And, and I like to tell people when you sign up for coaching, you're getting the power of that team backing your business. You're not going to run into anything that we haven't seen a hundred times before and gotten around through over under. We've done it. Uh, so that's a lot of the value of, of being with uh, being with us is we consider you now part of that team. We're here to serve you, all of us. So yeah, great job kind of breaking down what makes this different. I think we put a nice contrast to you know a, a, the rest of the industry. Not that we spend a lot of time comparing ourselves to competitors, but it is kind of nice to know of, of the options that listeners have out there. Mm -hmm. What do we do that's different? Um, does anything else come to mind there? I think we did a pretty thorough job before we move on. Yeah, no, uh, the only other thing that I would I would add to that would be the it's hard to articulate, but it's just the and I guess it just comes back to culture mm. of the community as a whole. It's I've never seen anything like it. It was in previous experiences and previous lives, that was I was always kind of different from the core group of people around me, because not only did I take an interest in helping people and getting them into the business, but I also thought, well, if we're teaching other people how to do it, we better be doing it ourselves as well. Right. And so mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity to participate in a lot of different business models over the years. And some of them have been successful. Some of them have failed, 
but there's enough of them that I've been able to stack on top of each other to where I don't have to work. I want to work. I want to be part of this. It's such a privilege and an honor to be the guy, even if it's just the guy holding up the sign, this is the way to go and being part of that journey. And we go to an event and somebody comes out and gives me a big bear hug and thanks me for getting them started and not letting them give up, not letting them quit. That just, it fills me up. That means the world to me. Well, you know, it, there's a couple of things that you just pointed out that I should have mentioned earlier in our discussion. And, and uh, I'm glad that you did, Matt, that you don't need this. You saw an opportunity to serve well and stepped into a role. You've had a lot of success. You could probably be out there on some kind of semi-pro golf tournament making money too. But you know, those who don't know, and I, I haven't seen you play yet, but I heard you're a killer, man. You win in all these city tournaments and such. But you've mm-hmm. you've got a heart for this. You want to help people see people succeed. You know that as and you, listeners have heard me say this before too. We are in a cultural war right now where things like success and building a business and having a strong family are seemingly under attack and almost seen as some kind of negative. Like, no, having a great family and a a walk with God and a business that's succeeding, those are actually the foundation of our culture, guys. Like, come on, we can't throw all those things under the bus. What do we have? You know, we've we've lost our culture at that point. So we see this as something bigger than just a few techniques to put a little extra money in the bank. This is stronger families. This is stronger communities. This is a fighting back against the culture, not to overstate what it is we do around here, but one family at a time, we are truly helping people succeed. And that ripples into their lives in big ways. Like you said, people coming up, giving us hugs and, and with, you know, tears in their eyes saying, you changed the course of my family's direct, direction. And, and, and I'm thinking, I, I, don't, I don't know who you are. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for buying the course. Thanks for going coaching. But what's your name? You know, we've built this machine that, truly is bigger than any of us that's having right. a powerful impact. So having guys that understand it at that core level is very meaningful to me. And I know you're one of those guys that does. So thank you for being a part of that. Of course, I appreciate it. Like I said, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege. Yeah, for me as well. For me as well. Every day I'm grateful for this. Uh, well, let's talk through some examples of maybe if there's a, a few calls that stand out or a few students that stand out, some people that you've, because you're on the phone quite a bit. We've seen some students come in, maybe even reluctantly at times and sure. kind of resist. Mm-hmm. Any stories come to mind like that? You know, um, one that comes to mind is uh, a gentleman and he's here local. He'll know who I'm talking about in Utah. But uh, he went back and forth with Deborah for years and and bless her for her persistence. I mean, we're blessed to have her in this community. She's rescued countless amounts of people and saved them from giving up. And I really appreciate that about her. And just he puts her heart in it. Great podcast episode. I'll link to the episode with Deborah in the show notes for the listeners. They can go back and hear that she's one of our consultants, been with us a long time, longer than you've been around. (laughs) She's been with us a while. Your house. Well, she's been a great asset to us for sure and continues to be. But she had a guy that she had been working with for years, trying to get him over the hump. And, and he was just kind of wanted to make sure everything was perfect, that he had everything in right. I've got to have the perfect business name and everything's got to be in place before I go. Well, when she finally got him on the phone with me, the one line that I spit out, and I don't know if it came from a book or where, but I use it all the time now, especially it's done is better than perfect. And that resonated with him and resonated with his wife. And then they told me they posted it on their work board right there next to their computer where they're working every day. And that was the constant mantra and reminder. And fast forward a couple of years, they're kicking butt. They're doing, last time I talked to them, they eclipsed a hundred grand in sales monthly and are just rocking and rolling. So that's phenomenal. And they're following the Amazon replens system. All, All replens, mostly RA. They've incorporated some OA now and, uh, even wholesale. I mean, they're constantly pushing to try to add more. And that's what it's all about is you get one system bolted down and then you go to add the next and you just continue to layer it up until eventually you look around and realize you're you're right where you want to be. Yep. Beautiful. Got to get them on the podcast, man. Send them my way, dude. That sounds like a great story that I hadn't heard yet. So <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get them over to you. I've, and- I've mentioned it a couple of times. We're We're going to get him there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I, that's, that's what, that's what makes the show so easy for me is just this constant stream of students saying, yeah, it works. Here's yeah. my story. <laughs> that's an easy job. 
Um, Results are the best marketing, no doubt yeah, about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. We don't need any slick marketing when you've got a, a, a line of success stories. You just listen to the people who are doing it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so what other stories? Any, any other stories stand out to you uh, from phone um, calls you've had, conversations? Yeah. I mean, most of my phone calls and conversations, it's just, it's really just helping people understand that it's an extension to a decision they've already made. If they decided that they're unhappy with something in their life, whether it's their their job or the hours that they work, the commute, it doesn't matter what the reason is. If they're unhappy for any reason, it's our role to empower them with the confidence to change. I mean, that's the single most important any thing that anybody can do in control is change. If you're unhappy with the situation, change it. You're not stuck in it. You're not bolted down to it. In our minds, we trap ourselves many times. And that's the trouble with the scarcity mindset that most people are tuned into is they're just trying to struggle through life and get by with as little as they possibly can. And it's just so much easier when you transfer into that abundant mindset and you recognize that the more you're willing to put yourself out there, the more you're willing to do, the more that's going to come back to you. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I was listening as you, as you were speaking, uh, as I was listening to you talk, I'm reminded of another lesson that I heard about us as, as humans. We're the only part of all creation, the mm-hmm. only thing that can wake up one day and say, I don't think I like where I'm at. I want to be here in a different place as soon as possible. What can I do to change the trajectory of where I'm heading so I can get over here instead? Like we can dictate. It doesn't always go perfectly according to plan, but we can change course anytime we want to and say, instead of going in this direction where I'm kind of heading, I think I'm going to go here instead from now on and just change. Just decide to think and do different things. And, you know, I, I think it was that book, The Compound Effect, where he, the, the author was talking about this, uh, this lady who had never really exercised or done any kind of significant physical activity in her whole life. And she met the author of the book and he said, I'm going to have you run a marathon. And she's like, you're nuts. And he's like, you can't make me run a marathon. He's like, no, not tomorrow. But what you're going to do t- today is you're going to, it was the furthest you've ever walked in your neighborhood and like, well, around the block. He's like, I don't even want you to do that. Just go to the end of your driveway and come back. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's all you got to do today. Right. Next day, a little further, 20 more feet. That's it. Right. Done for the day. Mm-hmm. Take a day or two off a week if you want to. But each time you go out, go just a little bit further than you did before. Mm-hmm. Jump forward. I think in his example, I think it was like 10, 12 months later, she was running races. And a couple of years later, she's doing a marathon a month. <laughs> it's like, wow. You can just wake up and decide to change. It's up to you or not. That's fine. We're not going to make you. But this is certainly one of those things where we can say, hey, we've got the roadmap. We've, we've got the guide to running marathons from sitting on your couch, watching too much Netflix to running a marathon, the business equivalent of that. We've got it. If you want the guide, we can, we can go through that with you and give you a great coach. Um, but it's up to you. You got to do the work. Right. And that's what I hear you saying. That's the example that popped in my head. Yeah. <laughs> well, what else, man? I, mean, I think this has been an episode. I, I like giving people, a, a, giving folks a, a peek into, you know, these are real people. These aren't bots. We're not using some call floor in the, you know, in the middle of some foreign country and people trying to you know, get your credit card as soon as they pick up the phone. We're qualifying you. We're having a conversation. Um, one of the things you mentioned all the time is leaving people better than you found them. Like, what does that mean in, in specifics? That's part of our what course that means, philosophy. Yeah, that's one of the mantras that we have here in the office. It's always, always leave them better than where you found them. And so that, whether that's just pointing them in the right direction to the right course, whether it's having a, a talk about what's really happening in their life and what's, it's not always about business and coaching. We're here to help people and serve people and have an impact on their lives. And that's what I try to do in every call, every conversation that we have is let's at least give them a nugget, something that they can hold on to and look back on and, and is going to help them improve in some way, shape or form in the future. Yeah. And you guys do a great job of it. When, when Nathan and I set the coaching program up 18, 19 years ago, uh, that was one of the things that 
we set in place as a core principle was Mm -hmm. we're not going to have people complaining about the sales process, you know, feeling like, yeah, they just were high pressure and pushing and rushing and trying to be like, no, we're going to, we're going to genuinely care for people. If we come in with a bad attitude, we're not going to get on the phone that day. And, and are we perfect? No. I mean, sometimes are there different conflicts of personality? Sure. We've, we've, talk to hundreds of thousands of people at this point on the phone. I don't know. But these conversations are characterized by, like you just said, leave them better than we found them. Give them a nugget, give them some encouragement, push them in the right direction. If it's not the right time, no rush. We'll be here when you are ready. Uh, Because the last thing we want is people getting into coaching and then a month later thinking to themselves, oh, this was terrible. You know, we wouldn't still be in business. But maybe that's a good point. We were talking about the contrast between what we do earlier um, and and what you've seen in the rest of the industry, what's the average life cycle of a business coaching operation from your experience? Well, from my experience, uh, it, it's very. I mean, there's some that are fly by night. They're not. They're here and gone within a year, right? Those are the the really bad players that you need to be careful and, and stay away from. And and I think that they've pretty well weeded themselves out. Although there's always another one that pops up every time you turn around. Right. But typically it's a, it's a three or five year cycle. And then they're either trying to move on to a different model to teach, or they're going to change their name, or they're going to do, you know, something to try to separate from the past and continue going forward. And that's what I love here. The past is our legacy. We wouldn't sacrifice that for anything good, bad, ugly. It hasn't always been perfect. Right. Right. But I think the results speak for themselves. Yeah. The past is our marketing. Yeah. Right. 18, 19 years. In internet years, that's a long time, man. Yeah, oh, and you yeah. know, I've never, I've never said this before, but the thought's occurring to me that you know, we've we've often said that we have the oldest Amazon training course in the industry. The first proven Amazon course was the very first in the industry, but we've also got the longest standing Amazon training coaching company. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds obvious as I say it, but I've never actually had that thought before. It's occurring to me that. No one was doing Amazon coaching before us either <laughs> because we were, we, we were coaching as we started that course. So it only makes yeah. sense. Right? Mm-hmm. So that, that means something that longevity should be, especially in e-commerce where companies, like you just said, they pop up and fade so fast. Mm-hmm. And we've seen them come and go. And we've seen the flash in the pan. And I, I, I've seen people pop up and I thought to myself, okay, they, they've got this thing pretty dialed in. I think they're going to do well. But then it, Six months later, they're gone. Like, where'd they go? What happened? Um, but here we are with the community. We're getting ready to have our 10th conference, you know, live gathering. Just amazing. And it, it's because guys like you holding us up, up the support. None of us are doing any crazy heavy lifting, but we're all doing our, you know, pulling our share mm-hmm. in the same direction. And it's, it's pretty incredible what's been built. Yeah. Well, and and we all know the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. I've adapted that to business. It it takes a village to raise a business. And that's what we do around here. We've got a deep pool of resources to draw from. If you're not getting the right help from one individual and you dress it with them and it's just not clicking, that's going to give us a great indicator on who we need to pivot to, to get it right the next time and make sure that we do find a good fit. That's why just going back to communication. That's the key. That's the number one thing that anybody can do to make sure they have a great experience with coaching is just communicate, be open and honest with us. We're going to be open and honest with you and we'll always find the way through. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, let, let's, uh, I think I'd like to end here. I'm just curious what you would say. I know what I would say. And I've heard the consultants speak on these things before when folks call in, but what are the benefits of coaching? Who is it for? And what are the benefits? And not the, you know, not the 20 minute version, but just, you know, hit the highlights for me. What's the, who's this for? Coaching, in my opinion, it's for anybody who has decided that they're going to treat this professionally, like a real business. If you look at any field, anybody who's at the top of their field, any professional, they've got a coach, they've got a mentor, they've got somebody who's pushing in them and helping them get their best. You need that big picture view that you can't always see the forest through your through the trees when you're on your own, right? But if you've got that third party perspective and somebody else who's overseeing and helping you understand where the path is and when to when to duck or dodge, it's a huge asset. And, and of course, speed and ease. I think that's the greatest value 
Uh, I don't think there's one person we brought into coaching who's been successful that couldn't have done it on their own. But with us, they're able to do a lot more, a lot faster, and avoid a lot of those pitfalls that could have potentially sunk them and gotten them frustrated enough to give up. And I love that we're confident enough in what we offer that I completely echo the sentiment that we've never coached a student to success that probably couldn't have arguably gotten there on their own. They, because that fire is inside of them. We can't make it appear. Exactly. But what we can do is shorten that learning curve, change the trajectory of that curve, put them in a far stronger position, far faster. And exactly. the added benefit of now you've got a community of like-minded people that you're plugged into. You've kind of moved a little closer to the center of the bullseye of this community. In effect, you know, the relationships, the partnerships, the, the strategies you'll be exposed to that you otherwise may have never discovered. Right. So a lot of that, one of the things I'm fond of saying about our coaching program, Matt, is if you never had a single session with your coach, you'd still benefit far more than the investment simply by being exposed to this core community of people who are taking this seriously mm -hmm. and just getting in the mix with that crowd and meeting those people and exposing yourself to these great business builders. Just right. if, you, if that's all you got was access to that group, it's more than worth the investment. The fact that you get one-on-one -on -one time and attention in a relationship with one of the most creative business building warriors in our community, that's a true add-on bonus. Uh, and that's what we're actually selling with the coaching. But I see it as long as a bonus in comparison to the community that you're now kind of plugged into. Um, yeah. And, you know, something I've been doing for a long time now and thoroughly enjoyed, Matt, I, I think I've told you I'm doing this, but I've been sending a text to every new coaching student. Same phone I've had for, I think, 25 years at this point. Same cell phone. I text them. If I, assuming I get their phone number, we don't always get that. But the vast majority of our new students, I, I text them and, and I'm here. I'm available. I'm part of that process as well. Uh, with my, you know, if I have anything to offer doing this 20 years, hopefully I do to, to the students who are coming in. So we love Absolutely. serving this group. Well, any, any final parting thoughts as we start to wrap this one up, Matt? I think it was a good episode. I think it's a good pull back the curtain into our coaching program yeah. today. And you're doing a tremendous job. Once again, I really appreciate you, buddy. Well, thank you. I appreciate you, Jim. I have to say, You've definitely elevate, elevated my game and my mindset and everything. I mean, they say you're the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. And, and you've made your way into that circle for me. And it's been a, a huge blessing in my life. So I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it and how much I love working with you and Nathan and the team and all of the coaches, all of the consultants, Jim Cooper, Marina Cooper at the office, holding everything down. We've, we've just got such a great group, Jim. We're blessed. We, we certainly are, man. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I think it is it the, the Jim Rohn, the only difference between where you are now and where you'll be five years from now is the people you're hanging out with and the content you're consuming. That's my version of it anyway. <laughs> right. Who are you hanging out with? What content are you consuming? What are you letting into your eyes and ears? It, and who's a phone call away? Who are you rubbing shoulders with frequently? That's your, that's your destination. That's your future, right? So yeah, iron sharp and iron, buddy. I, I sure appreciate you. And I think it's a good episode for a good number of people. So if people want to get in contact with us, want to have a conversation about coaching, of course, they can go to Jim Cockrum Coaching. There's a link at silentgym.com as well with all that info. Do you happen to have the phone number memorized? I don't. After 20 years, you think I would. <laughs> I do. I'm around it enough that uh, the number to call in for the toll-free number is 800-994-1792. And if you want to shoot us a text and start a conversation that way, that's a very low key way to kind of get it going. And that's 385-284-7701. That's for Canada and US only. And honestly, I had no idea. <laughs> those numbers. I've seen them so many times that I just don't memorize phone numbers anymore. So thanks. I put you on the spot there. Good job. Good. But uh, yeah, give us a call or that information will all be in the show notes as well. So you can have a chat with Matt or Deborah, one of the other consultants on our team there at the office. We got some really good people that can help you decide if this is a good fit. So I think we'll wrap it up here, buddy. That was a good right. episode, Matt. Hey, thanks, Jim. It was Thank a pleasure. You. And for all okay. the listeners out there, the business building warriors who hung out with Matt and I today, we owe you a debt of gratitude because you gave us a tremendous gift today. That's some of your time, the most valuable asset you have. And you just gave some of that to Matt and I. We are very grateful for that. And we pray that that's something that comes back to you 10 or 100 fold. 
by the time you invested today. Maybe you won't be a coaching student. That's fine. Maybe something else we said challenged you or you dig a little deeper into our community, make some connections and some relationships. That's awesome. That's what we want for you. We got our free Facebook group. Matt mentioned it earlier, 70,000 members as we're recording this. Just good people from all over the world building businesses, using the internet creatively. We want you to be a part of that group. It's free. Jump in. Come see if what we're saying is true. Come check out the 1,300 posted success stories. Email some of those people. Private message them. Get to know them. This is legitimate. And we stand behind what we shared today as a, a great opportunity for those. If it's a good fit, if you're in the right season of life. So give us a call. Come check us out. Good hanging out with you today. So... God bless you, business building warrior. We will have another great episode for you very soon. 